the compromise available at the click of a mouse, including what can happen in a chat room's virtual encounter, is no respecter of persons, male or female, young or old, married or single. If we stop chopping at the branches of this problem and strike more directly for a moment at the root of the tree, not surprisingly, we find lust lurking furtively there. Why is lust such a deadly sin? Well, in addition to the completely spirit-destroying impact it has upon our souls, I think it's a sin because it defiles the highest and holiest relationship God gives us in mortality, the love that a man and a woman have for each other and the desire that couple has to bring children into a family intended to be forever. Someone once said that true love must include the idea of permanence. True love endures. But lust? Lust changes as quickly as it can turn a pornographic page. Or glance at yet another potential object for gratification walking by, male or female. Well, let's talk for a moment about how to guard against temptation. Acknowledge that people bound by the chains of true addictions often need more help than self-help, and that may include you. Seek that help and welcome it. Talk to your bishop. Follow his counsel. Ask for a priesthood blessing. Use the church's family service offerings or seek other suitable professional help. Pray without ceasing. Ask for angels to help you. Along with filters on computers and a lock on affections, remember that the only real control in life is self-control. Exercise more control over even the marginal moments that confront you. If a TV show is indecent, turn it off. If a movie is crude, walk out. If an improper relationship is developing, sever it. An old proverb says that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So, watch your step. Replace lewd thoughts with hopeful images and joyful memories. Picture the faces of those who love you. And would be shattered if you let them down. Cultivate and be where the Spirit of the Lord is. Make sure that includes your own home or apartment, dictating the kind of art, music, and literature you keep there. Most people in trouble end up crying, What was I thinking? Well, whatever they were thinking, they weren't thinking of Christ. Yet as members of His Church, we pledge every Sunday of our lives to take upon ourselves His name and promise to always remember Him. So let's work a little harder at remembering Him, especially that He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and that He was bruised for our iniquities, and with His stripes we are healed. But if we do sin, however serious that sin may be, we can be rescued by that same majestic figure. He who bears the only name given under heaven, whereby any man or woman can be saved. When confronting our transgressions and our souls are harrowed up with true pain, may we all echo the repentant Alma and utter his life-changing cry. Oh Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me.